reading from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila Chapter 1, titled The Spiritual Masters. Uh, we are reading from text 40 and 49, I believe. It says 48 and 49. 48 and 49. That's it. <clears throat> Is there with Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya or Jai? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Lost it. Is it up on the board to chant or no? Yeah. What do you, what do you got on the board? 48, 49. Yeah, it's both there. 48. Nine, it's yeah. 48. 48. You want 49? No, 48 is good. Let's do that. Naiva <laughs> Payant. Yapachitim. Kavayas Tavesha Hmm How does the uh, Brahma Samhita meter just remind me of that again? Huh? If you're chanting a Brahma Samhita verse, can you remind me of the meter for that? Yes, Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Naiva payantya pachitim kavayasta vesha Naivo payantya pavitim kavayasta vesha Brahma yushapi Kritam Rida Muda Smaranta Brahma Yushapi Kritam Ridha Muda Smaranta Brahma Yushapi Kritam Ridha Muda Smaranta Yo, Ntar, Pahis, Tanu, Britam, Ashubam, Vidunvan, Yontar, Bahish, Tanu, Britam, Ashubam, Vidunvan. Yantar Bahishtanu Britam Ashubam Vidunvan Acharya Chaitya Papusha Swagatim Vyanakti Acharya Chaitya Vapusha Svagatim Yanakti Acharya Chaitya Vapusha Svagatim Yanakti Acharya 
naivo payant yapachitim kavayasta vesha. Brahma yupashpi kritam ridhamudas maranta. Yontar bahista tu britam ashubam vadunvan. Acharyam chaitya vapusha svagatim yanakti. Naeva. Naeva. Not at all. Upayanti are able to express. Apachatim, their gratitude. Kavayaha, learned devotees. Tava, your. Isha, O Lord. Brahma Ayusha with a lifetime equal to Lord Brahma's. Api, in spite of. Kritam, <coughs> magnanimous work. Ridha, increased. Mudha, joy. Smarantaha, Remembering, yaha, who, anta, within, bahi, outside, tanubritam, of those who are embodied, ashubam, misfortune, vidunvan, dissipating, Acharya of the spiritual master. Chaitya of the super soul. Vapusha by the forms. Sva own. Gatim path. Vyanakti shows. Translation. O oh my Lord, transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you, even if they were endowed with the prolonged lifetime of Brahma. For you appear in two features, externally as the Acharya and internally as the Super Soul, to deliver the embodied living beings by directing him how to come to you. Purport by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. This verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 11.29.6 was spoken by Sri Uddhava after he heard from Sri Krishna all necessary instructions about yoga. <coughs> Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana shalakaya Chakshudam militam yenam Tasmai si gurave namaha Sri Chaitanya manobistam Stapitam yena bhutale Swayam rupakadamayam dadati svarapadantikam Pande hum si guru Shri Uta Parakamalam Si Guru Vaishnavam Sha Si Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Raguna Tanvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Si Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shivishakan Itamsha He Krishna Kuruna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate 
गोपेशा गोपिका कंता राधा कंता नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गोरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वानु सुत देवी प्रणमामी हरि प्रिय पंचकल्पतरुभ्यश्चा कृपा सिंधु वैवचा पतितानाम भावनेव्यो वैष्णवेव्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद सियाद्वैतगनाधार शिवासारी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण आई एम वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू वंस अगेन हैव द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू ट्राई टू से समथिंग आई एम एब्सोल्युटली एन अनक्वालिफाइड पर्सन आई एम बेगिंग फॉर ऑल ऑफ योर ब्लेसिंग्स आई प्रे टू बी एबल टू से समथिंग अप्रोप्रिएट एंड रेलेवेंट टुडे so this is the very first chapter of chaitanya charitamrita and shil prabhupad explains that krishnadas kaviraj has written 14 introductory sanskrit verses at the right at the beginning of this chapter uh and this section this chapter is titled the spiritual masters and in this section we are hearing krishnadas kaviraj's own elaboration on uh well he will elaborate on all of those verses he's written kind of like seed verses and then he will further describe and explain them and so now we're hearing a further explanation of the first verse maybe it's worth even looking at that and maybe you can even say the first line of the first verse which is uh glorification of the spiritual masters I offer my respectful obeisances unto the spiritual masters the devotees of the lord the lord's incarnations his plenary portions his energies and the primeval lord himself sri krishna chaitanya uh, this is the very first verse of chaitanya charitamrita vande gurun isha bhaktan So he is offering his obeisances first to Gurun unto the spiritual masters. And so this verse um there have been several verses preceding this one where he has begun to uh glorify Guru the principle of Guru and here he's citing a verse uh the purport says spoken by Uddhava in the 11th canto after krishna has spoken the uddhava gita o oh my lord transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you even if they were endowed with the prolonged lifetime of brahma so um there is no end to our indebtedness to guru I I heard a story one of a disciple of Srila Prabhupada told once Srila Prabhupada was giving a class and he asked for questions and one of the devotees stood up and in a very emotional way his question was Srila Prabhupada how can we ever repay you and his answer at that time was always remain obliged so here this verse is saying even if we have the lifetime of brahma even if we are expert in spiritual science even if we are a poet uh we will not be able to express our gratitude our indebtedness to guru even in our programs that shri prabhupada has given like we're singing um the guru vastaka of uh, vishnuth chakravarti takur glorifying guru what are the glories what are the qualities of guru every day um and in centers around the world the devotees are getting darshan of mangalarti of the deities maybe radha krishna gornitai jagannath but their first prayer is the prayer to guru to glorify guru and similarly we have the uh 
the Guru Puja every day. We can meditate very um, deeply on, on the, the, profound, the profoundness of those prayers. It's always our challenge in Krishna consciousness um, how to continually Im upgrade or improve our surrender to Guru. Uh, now I'm attached to my own independent desires, but I may have some of faith in Guru. Uh, but progressively, I should uh, make the attempt to give up my own independent ag agenda and give everything to Guru. That's our struggle. That's our main program. And service to Guru is eternal. It's not that, um, you know, in some spiritual path it may be, okay, I got something, I learned something from the Guru, now he can be disregarded. Now, now there's no need for him anymore. That's maybe like an impersonal idea or a personal path. In our line, Guru is the, uh, the most intimate servant of God. And so he represents God. And it's always our position to be the servant of Guru. So, uh, he's, Uddhava is saying to Krishna, you appear in two features, externally as the Acharya and internally as the Super Soul, to deliver the embodied living being by directing him how to come to you. <clears throat> and then the next verse, Krishna Skaviraj cites a verse from Bhagavad Gita. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami budi yogam tam yena mam upayantite. Translation To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Purport This verse of the Bhagavad Gita 10.10 clearly states how Govindadev instructs his bona fide devotee. The Lord declares that by enlightenment in theistic knowledge, he awards attachment for him to those who are constantly, excuse me, to those who constantly engage in his transcendental loving service. This awakening of divine consciousness enthralls a devotee who thus relishes his eternal transcendental mellow. Such an awakening is awarded only to those convinced by devotional service about the transcendental nature of the personality of Godhead. They know that the absolute truth, the all-spiritual and all-powerful person, is one without a second and has fully transcendental senses. He is the fountainhead of all emanations. Such pure devotees always merged in knowledge of Krishna and absorbed in Krishna consciousness, exchange thoughts and realizations as great scientists exchange their views and discuss the results of their research in scientific academies. Such exchanges of thought in regard to Krishna give pleasure to the Lord, who therefore favors such devotees with all enlightenment. Hmm. So, for those who are constantly serving the Lord, Prabhupada writes, then Krishna will bless you with attachment. It, we know the, the stages in Krishna consciousness from Shraddha to Prema. Uh, so the stage before Bhava Bhakti is Asakti, which means attachment. It's at that time when uh, the mind will be one's friend. Because one's natural desire, one's natural inclination will be to serve the Lord. And that's, uh, that may be the, the blessing, the hard-earned blessing of um, a long period of, you know, struggle in devotional service. Uh, by dedicating oneself to constantly serving the Lord, then such attachment can come. He's also uh, glorifying the devotees. Such pure devotees always merged in knowledge of Krishna and absorbed in Krishna consciousness, exchanged thoughts and realizations as great scientists exchange their views. So Krishna consciousness is a science. Uh, it, 
it's ultimately meant to culminate in realization. And so, based on our services, um, based on our hearing from the higher authority, and based on our own realizations, then devotees can come together and discuss. But today is the um, disappearance day of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Um, and Krishnas Kaviraj has written extensively about Vrindavan Das Thakur as well and glorified Vrindavan Das Thakur. In a way you can say Chaitanya Charitamrita is like the sequel to Vrindavan Das Thakur's most important work, the, the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Um, Vrindavan Das Thakur was born as the son of Narayani, who was a niece of Srivast Thakur. Srivast Thakur had several brothers. One of his brothers had a daughter, Narayani. And it seems like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was regularly going to the house of uh, Srivast Thakur for Kirtan. And it seems like she was the dar you know, a darling child of the house. And she took the Mahaprasadam of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, as a small girl. It's described like that in the Mahaprakash Leela that Narayani uh, took Mahaprasadam from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and she became famous as Narayani who's gotten that blessing. At that time, I read somewhere, she was maybe less than five years old, like a four-year-old girl. Uh, when she was pregnant with Brindavan Das Thakur, she was widowed at that time. Uh, Brindavan Das Thakur was born, it said, maybe four years after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the world, he was about 20 years old. Later, after, he, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left, Vrindavan Das Thakur took initiation from Nityananda Prabhu. And he's described by Krishna Das Kaviraj as the favorite disciple of Nityananda Prabhu and also as an incarnation of Vyasadeva. Just like Vyasadeva compiled Srimad Bhagavatam and other Puranas, he compiled Mahabharata, which includes Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and so he is the authorized writer about the pastimes of Krishna. So Vrindavan Das Thakur is considered the Vyasadeva for the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the, um, in the eighth chapter of the Adi Lila, of, Ch of Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, Krishna Kaviraj spends some time uh, speaking about the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He, he speaks about uh, the importance of devotional service and the importance of accepting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Lord to attain success in Krishna consciousness. He gives the example of Jarasandha. Uh, Jarasandha was a great follower of the Vedic principles. Like, if you'll remember from the Krishna book, when, uh, when Krishna, he came with Arjuna and Bhima to fight with Jarasandha, because Jarasandha needed to be defeated in order for Yudhisthira to do the Rajasuya Yagya. That was considered the obstacle to being able to do that. Krishna had already fought with Jarasandha so many times before, and would destroy his armies, but not ultimately defeat Jarasandha. He would continue letting him free so that he would continue to bring more armies. So anyway, so they went to, to Jarasandha, and they went in the guise of Brahmins, because Jarasandha was considered to be extremely charitable to Brahmins. He would never refuse them. So that's a very noble principle of Vedic culture, that a Kshatriya will behave like that. So Krishna Kaviraj says, but without accepting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then just like Jarasandha, he was a demon, <laughs> even though following Vedic principles. Uh, so one will be a demon without accepting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Quite a heavy, quite a heavy comment. So now he will say, he will give his advice. <laughs> 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the independent supreme personality of Godhead, is greatly magnanimous. Unless one worships him, one can never be liberated. O oh, fools, just read Sri Chaitanya Mangal. By reading this book, you can understand all the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Rindavan Das Thakur's biography of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was originally called Chaitanya Mangal. Later, Lochan Das Thakur also wrote a biography uh, with the same name. And so, the senior Vaishnavas at one point decided that Vrindavan Das Thakur's book will be renamed as Chaitanya Bhagavad. But in all the verses of Chaitanya, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's always referred to as Chaitanya Mangal. So, O oh fools, just read Sri Chaitanya Mangal. This is the instruction from Krishna Das Kaviraj. By reading this book, you can understand all the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As Vyasadev has compiled all the pastimes of Lord Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam, Thakur Brindavan Das has depicted the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Thakur Brindavan Das has composed Sri Chaitanya Mangal. Hearing this book annihilates all misfortune. Hearing this book annihilates all misfortune. By reading Sri Chaitanya Mangal, one can understand all the glories and truths of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda and come to the ultimate conclusion of devotional service to Lord Krishna. In Sri Chaitanya Mangal, later known as Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur has given the conclusion and essence of devotional service by quoting the authoritative statements of Srimad Bhagavatam. If even a great atheist hears Sri Chaitanya Mangal, he immediately becomes a great devotee. The Bengali says, Chaitanya Mangal Suneyadi Pashandi Yavana Seha Maha Vaishnavahaya Tatakshana. So even if one is a Pashandi or a great atheist, even if one is a Yavana, a non-believer in the Vedic culture, by reading the Chaitanya Mangal, he will immediately become a great devotee. So that sounds nice, doesn't it? I was also born a Yavana. <laughs> um, and so here's the... Uh, Here's very powerful advice for me. <laughs> the subject matter of this book is so sublime that it appears that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has personally spoken through the writings of Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur. I offer millions of obeisances unto the lotus feet of Vrindavan Das Thakur. No one else could write such a wonderful book for the deliverance of all fallen souls. Narayani eternally eats the remnants of the food of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur was born of her womb. This purport is very relevant. I'm sure they're all relevant, but you can look at this one. In text 43 of Gaur Ganadesh Deepika, a book written by Kavi, Karnap Kavi Karnapur that describes all the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and who they previously were, there is the following statement regarding Narayani. When Lord Krishna was a child, he was nursed by a woman named Ambika who had a younger sister named Kalimbika. During the time of Lord Chaitanya's incarnation, the same Kalimbika used to eat the remnants of food left by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That Kalimbika was Narayani, who was a niece of Srivas Thakur's. Later on, when she grew up and married, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur was born from her womb. A devotee of Lord Sri Krishna is celebrated in terms of devotional service rendered to the Lord. Thus we know Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur as the son of Narayani. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur notes in this connection that there is no reference to his paternal ancestry because there is no need to understand it. That's very interesting. 
No need to understand his paternal ancestry, just the fact that his mother had taken the remnants from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that's all you need to know. <laughs> um, I think we can also say that the Vaishnavas tend to be very humble and keep themselves in the background. And so it's not that Vrindavan Das Thakur wrote about himself to that extent, you know, who is my father, what is my lineage, like that. So going on, what a wonderful description he has given of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Anyone in the three worlds who hears it is purified. I fervently appeal to everyone to adopt the method of devotional service given by Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda and thus be freed from the miseries of material existence and ultimately achieve the loving service of the Lord. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur has written Sri Chaitanya Mangal and therein described in all respects the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. He first summarized all the pastimes of the Lord and later described them vividly in detail. The pastimes of Lord Chaitanya are unlimited and unfathomable. Therefore, in describing all those pastimes, the book became voluminous. He saw them to be so extensive that he later felt that some had not been properly described. He ecstatically described the pastimes of Lord Nityananda, but the latter pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained untold, right? Because, Chaitanya, uh, because Krishna's Kaviraj is also writing a huge biography of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why do we need another one? Because the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are so voluminous that even in Vrindavan Das Thakur's large volume of uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat, some pastimes were not there. Um, especially the, the specialty of the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat will be Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes as a grihasta before he took sannyas. Uh, the the Lila of Chaitanya Bhagavat are full of pastimes from before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation from Ishwara Puri. Then the Madhya Lila are after he took initiation and he begins his Sankirtan pastimes. He starts doing Sankirtan at the house of Srivas Thakur and he begins to meet uh, various associates. He comes to the company of Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya, like that. And then the uh, the final pastimes, maybe the Shesha Lila, it's called in Chaitanya, Ma, uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat. There's only ten chapters. He doesn't go so far into those pastimes. Whereas in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Adi Lila gives five chapters where the, uh, the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from before he took sannyas are kind of, they're gone through at a somewhat quicker pace. And often Krishnas Kaviraj will say, um, that he will mention a pastime and he will say this has been elaborately described by Vrindavan Das Thakur. So in that way the two books are kind of complementary. The devotees of Vrindavan were all very anxious to hear those pastimes, meaning those that remained untold. In Vrindavan, in a great place of pilgrimage, underneath the desire trees is a golden throne bedecked with jewels. On that throne sits the son of Nanda Maharaj, Sri Govinda Dev, the transcendental Cupid. Varieties of majestic service are rendered to Govinda there. His garments, ornaments, and paraphernalia are all transcendental. In that temple of Govindaji, thousands of servitors always render service to the Lord in devotion. Even with thousands of mouths, one could not describe this service. In that temple, the chief servitor was Sri Haridas Pandit. His qualities and fame are known all over the world. He was gentle, tolerant, peaceful, magnanimous, grave, sweet in his words, and very sober in his endeavors. He was respectful to everyone and worked for the benefit of all. Diplomacy, envy, and jealousy were unknown to his heart. The fifty qualities of Lord Krishna were all present in his body. Hmm. Anyway, so there's some description. The point I wanted to, to also make 
Maybe I'll just say it in summary. Krishidas Kaviraj will go to the leading Vaishnavas of his time to get their blessings to write about the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because to take on such a responsible task is not an ordinary thing. To write transcendental subject, one has to be blessed from above. And so the point that's there again and again is that all of these great Vaishnavas from whom Krishnadas Kaviraj got his blessings, they themselves were absorbed in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How were they absorbed in those pastimes? Well, Chaitanya Charitamrita hadn't been written yet. <laughs> so they were absorbed in the pastimes described by Vrindavan Das Thakur. That's what I wanted to say. Um, from Chaitanya Bhagavat, this is Vrindavan Das Thakur's book. We can just read about Narayani at the Mahaprakash. The remnants of the Lord's foodstuffs went to the pious and fortunate Narayani. The Lord personally gave this innocent little niece of Srivas Pandit, his brother's daughter, his own remnants. She ate the Lord's remnants with great joy and relish. The Vaishnavas blessed her, saying that she was most fortunate since she could directly serve the Supreme Lord, Narayan, at such a young age. After Narayani had eaten, Lord Chaitanya said, Narayani, let me hear you cry for Krishna in great ecstasy. Such is the influence of Lord Chaitanya's words that she immediately called out, Krishna, Krishna, and began to weep. Thus, for all time, this pastime became famous among the Vaishnavas, and the little girl became known as Narayani, who ate Lord Chaitanya's remnants. Anyway, maybe we'll leave it here. If anyone has any comments or questions. Hi Krishna, thank you very much for watching. So I have a question which is kind of a difficult question. It's a question for Shri Prabhupada and and don't mind don't mind such a question. It's an interesting question. So why did Shri Prabhupada translate and preach from and travel the world with Chaitanya Charitamrita and place such an emphasis on Chaitanya Charitamrita as that is the postgraduate work, that is the primary work, that is that is the sum of all, that is the the be all and end all of Gauratattva as Chaitanya Charitamrita and he, he didn't travel the world with Chaitanya Bhagavad and, and preach so much from Chaitanya Bhagavad and, and give Chaitanya Bhagavad to his disciples. There's so much emphasis on Chaitanya Charitamrita and his preaching and um, Chaitanya Bhagavad. So what's the difference there and what's the reason there? What, 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 what's the significance you know, between the two? And, and why did why did Shri Prabhupada make that decision to uh, preach from Chaitanya Charitamrita and give Chaitanya Charitamrita as the, the prime Shastra for all of us in Islam? rather than changing the what's the, what's going on? Thank you so much for that question. I was also thinking about that. You know, I'd, I'd asked a senior person about that, and I liked their answer very much. I will share it for what it's worth. Of the two books, Chaitanya Charitamrita um, has a lot more philosophical depth. Uh, it's maybe a more difficult work. And so how valuable it is that our Acharya has commented on it and presented it extensively. Um, the Chaitanya Bhagavad, if it's translated by somebody else, there may be much less room for misunderstanding. Uh, our Gaudiya library is huge. Chaitanya, uh, Srila Prabhupada, he had so many years to um, translate the things that he translated. Even Srimad Bhagavatam, he couldn't complete the 12 cantos. 
If, if, uh, if he had remained for longer, could he present other things? Anyway, I've shown from Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can't overstate, you know, <laughs> Srila Prabhupada in his own book, as I've just said, right? The, ins the instruction is clear, oh fools, just read Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. No, no, no. Some one is better than the other. I mean, and the question is, uh, what's, what's in Chaitanya Charitamrita that's so significant? Huh. That's maybe not in Chaitanya Bhagavat. What are the, it's not that one is better than the other or something like that, but what are the contrasting differences? You know, what makes one unique and what makes the other unique? Yeah, that's more the intention of the question. Yeah, okay. Well, Chaitanya Charitamrita is much deeper in, its, uh, in the way that it describes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taking the mood of Radharani. Chaitanya Bhagavat doesn't, doesn't really go there, actually. Um, Chaitanya, and again, like I tried to say, Chaitanya Bhagavat is more focused on the Grihastha Leelas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita is more focused on the sannyas leelas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's, those are, I mean, in a very simple way, those are some of the, some of the differences. We had heard, um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati had instructed his disciples that all should read Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavat a hundred times. And as a start, like 16 rounds is the minimum. So, so uh, anyway, Bhubaneshwar Prabhu was thinking about that and I, I read the Chaitanya Bhagavat to him maybe three and a half times, which was a lot. <laughs> but anyway, long way to a hundred. As you said, the preaching mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very prominent in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I'm sure it's also in the Chaitanya Bhagavad or Chaitanya Mangala. But Sri uh, Prabhupada commented that one author or writer said that you would be a good person to translate this Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he took that as an uh, inspiration that this. That is bring Chaitanya Charitamrita. And also the Prabhupada took solace in Chaitanya Charitamrita on his voyage over on Jaladuta. But whenever there's any disturbing moment, Chaitanya Charitamrita would be great uh, happiness. So like you said, there's so many transcendental literatures, not that one is better, this way or that. But Prabhupada gave us a, a treasure house of literature with full instructions and just follow Guru Parampara and follow the, the mood of the Prabhupada gave it, how he gave it to the Guru. So much literature is there. We're not, we're not minimizing anything from Thank you. But you, 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 you might have 20, 20, 30 big cakes and Prabhupada eat from this cake and have the, the flavor of all of them. So we eat from this cake and we start eating all the cakes everywhere you get to go Thank you for it. Thank you. <laughs> Prabhu has a question or a comment? Oh. Going back to the beginning, um, now the word was incentive in offering respects to the spiritual master, the acharyas. I, I mentioned in a in class a few weeks ago how Prabhupada chastised Prajuna because Guru Puja was going on and Prajuna wasn't there. So he went and had a servant at Prajuna and he said, where are you? Prajuna was worshiping the Sheila that Prabhupada had given him just days before. So he was in his room doing his, his puja and Prabhupada said, first Guru Puja, then you do your puja. So it's very important we understand what's important and that's why every day we keep saying the same thing, this plain program is this is what you know, our spiritual master has given us, this is our most important thing. As far as Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Bhagavad, it was Prabhupada's choice, I think. You'll find many places where there's no why. 
you know, this was his decision for whatever reason. And of course, he credits Prajuna and his wife, Arandati, for actually doing the vast majority of the work in that. Wow. When it was being a Puja day, he glorified the two of them. He said, actually, Prajuna is not a Tejana charity. Wow. So this is how he came to the how he sees things. Wow. Hey, Prabhu. Chandrasekhar Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu, for your really nice eloquent class. Um, just echoing, echoing what you said regarding the Chaitanya Bhagavad Gita verses in relation to Chaitanya Bhagavad My humble understanding, my understanding that Prabhu was concerned that he received his letters that if this would not be established before he would pass away. His first generation followers, sincere as they were, and they would agree he did not know the Siddhanta that we sort of take it, that we take for granted 50 years later. And as you so nicely said, Chaitanya Chaitanya has a lot more of a Siddhantic emphasis. And so if we I mean, maybe sort of philosophically speculate, Prabhupada made that choice. Yeah, thank you for saying that more clearly than I did. That was nice. No, no really. <laughs> okay, thank you so much everyone for your kind attention. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.